This is Pastor Joey Pagadora, and this is Senior Moments to Remember. Thank you for joining us today. It's a beautiful day. It's a Friday, and we are looking forward to having a great weekend in the house of God. Now, this coming weekend, maybe you're still not able to go out of the house. Then just enjoy, at the comfort of your own home, our online services. You know that as soon as the lockdown started in March 15 last year, Pastor Samral and Sister Bev immediately went online so that they can provide an online service for us and they are continuing to do it. And you're one of the special reasons why we are continuing to do this service so that you will still be able to feed from His Word. Now, before we start our episode today, we'd like to remind you, if you have any prayer requests, please type them in the comment section below. We would love to pray with you. Or if you just want to say hi, let's know where you are at. It would be awesome to hear from you. Let's open in prayer. Father, I lift up to you, my brother, my sister. And I pray, God, that as we have a wonderful time together, let your presence bring strength into their bodies. Let your presence bring joy into their hearts. Thank you so much, God, for your faithfulness and for your goodness. Bless our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's open our hearts and worship him. Good morning. Come and join me in worshiping our wonderful God. Moments to remember, moments to remember. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Moments to remember, moments to remember. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old days. They will stay fresh and green to proclaim the Lord is upright. He's my rock and there's no wickedness in Him. Moments to remember, moments to remember. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Moments to remember, moments to remember. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the course of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green to proclaim the Lord is upright. He's my rock and there's no wickedness in Him. Moments to remember, moments to remember, moments to remember, moments to remember, moments to remember. When you walk into the room. Everything changes Darkness starts to tremble At the light that you bring And when you walk into the room Every heart starts burning And nothing matters more than just To sit here at your feet And worship you We worship you love you and we'll never stop we can't live without you Jesus we love you and we can't get enough all this is for you Jesus walk when you walk into the room sickness starts to vanish every hopeless situation ceases to exist and when you walk into the room 
The dead begins to rise Cause there is resurrection life In all you do We love you And we'll never stop We can't live without you Jesus We love you And we can't get it all this is for you, Jesus. We love you, and we'll never stop. We can't live without you, Jesus. We love you, and we can't get it. Stop, we can't live without you, Jesus. We love you, and we can't get enough. All this is for you, Jesus. Jesus. Blessed day to you. This is Pastor Joey, and this is your wow moment. Wow meaning words of wisdom. And we know that wisdom is important to you because you have lived it. You have proven it, and now you are enjoying the fruit of wisdom in your life. Our wow moment for today will again still be in Psalm 86, verse 15. And we are about to conclude reading, studying this verse. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding and in steadfast love and faithfulness. It's been an incredible week just with this verse. And we've talked about God being merciful, God being so gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. And today, we're going to talk about the fact that He is the God who is so full of faithfulness. And this reminds us immediately of Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22, a song that when I got saved at 16 years old and I stepped foot inside Cathedral of Praise, this is one of the very first songs that I learned. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Yes, great is the Lord's faithfulness. Now, in the early part of our quarantine last year, Pastor Samuel started teaching us that faithfulness is the Greek word emuna, and it actually means trustworthiness. So you can trust God. All of the promises of God, you can put your trust in Him. All the promises of God, all the words of God, you can rely on His words. You can sure, and you can be very, very be 100% assured that all of the promises of God are yes and amen through Him through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is trustworthy. Every promise that He has for you is yes and amen through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, because God's faithfulness is great, you can be assured that whatever it is that He promised you, you can hold on to it. And no matter how long this quarantine takes, His promise is there. It endures. He will never grow weary. He will never grow tired of fulfilling His promises to you. As a matter of fact, even when you forget His promise, He will still fulfill it. You see, His faithfulness will not depend on our memory of His promises. No, His faithfulness is just because of Him. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, If we are faithless, He remains faithful, for He cannot deny Himself. Now, we are all familiar with what you call utang na loob, and it's so much indebted in our society. You see, when you do things out of utang na loob, it's okay, but it's limited. You see? So, when, when we do things for people, sometimes it's because of utang na loob. My friend, it's not the way of God. It's not, it's not the same with God. 
when you do things for God, don't do it out of utang ng loob kay God. You know why? Because there is no way for you to repay God. There is no way for you to return the faithfulness of God. Psalm 108 verse 4, For your steadfast love is great above the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. God's faithfulness can never be matched. So when you do things for God, it is because you love Him. You want to obey Him. You trust Him. You want to follow Him. It's never to repay Him. We can never repay God with utang na loob. God's faithfulness reaches to the clouds. That's the, that's the stretch. That's the vastness of the faithfulness of God. It's immeasurable. It is unreachable. And you know what? The faithfulness of God, as, uh, as vast as it is, as immeasurable as it is, it covers you. And it covers the generations after you. Psalm 100 verse 5, For the Lord is good, His steadfast love endures forever, and His faithfulness to all generations. You living a righteous life, you living a life for God is preparing a covering of faithfulness, not just for you, but for the next generations in your family. Be reminded that His blessings, His promises, His faithfulness will cover not just you, but cover the next generations. Why? Because our God is faithful. This has been your wow moment. And our prayer for you is that as you continue in wisdom, the days, the weeks, the months, and the years ahead of you will even be more fruitful. God bless you. Hello, wonderful exemplars. This is Pastor Paula, and welcome to another Sababa segment. Today, we will continue our study in our journey through the Sea of Galilee. So, did you know that a 2,000-year-old boat was found on the shore of the Sea of Galilee? So, this ancient boat is said to be the kind of boat that Jesus and his disciples used to sail on the lake. So, it was found in January 1986 during the time when a severe drought gripped the land of Israel. White expanses of lake bed, normally covered with water, were exposed when they found the boat. It is not the type of boat that we used to sail on today how you know how the disciples sailed on that boat i don't know how they they fit in that because it's really not that gigantic or enormous it's small and it's made of wood but probably it was made of sturdy wood and it can really accommodate 12 13 people inside but I can imagine how it really scared the wits out of the disciples when the winds and the waves gripped them in the middle of the lake because it's a small boat and there's 12 or 13 of them inside of it and that's really scary. All right, so let me show you some pictures of that boat and they were able to preserve that boat for how many years since 1986 there it was a really a careful process of really preserving and really putting the debris out of that boat so for today let us look at matthew chapter 14 verses 22 to 34 and we will see what happened there and let's see what sababa lesson are we going to learn from that event it says there Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind has risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water when jesus saw him walking on the water they were terrified in their fear they cried out it's a ghost but jesus spoke to them at once don't be afraid he said take courage i am here then peter called to him lord if it's really you tell me to come to you walking on the water yes come jesus said then 
Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. After they had crossed the lake, they landed at Gennesaret. When the people recognized Jesus, the news of his arrival spread quickly throughout the whole area, and soon people were bringing all their sick to be healed. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched him were healed. So today we are going to look at that instance where Peter walked on water. They saw Jesus and Peter really wanted to know, hey, Lord, if it's really you, let me walk on water, ask me to walk on water. And the moment that Peter, you know, saw the winds and the waves, he started to chicken out and began to sink. If we are going to compare that to our lives, there are some things that you know we want to do we really want to do and to do for the lord and to really walk on water and to really come to jesus and do things for jesus but because because of our age you think that we cannot do this anymore you know taking this next step in our lives is not for me anymore and we have doubts we are afraid you know thinking you know we're not gonna make it you're not gonna be able to do it and you know that's focusing on the winds and the waves around you and not focusing your eyes on jesus but jesus tells us don't be afraid don't be afraid he's with us he's going to help us through and he holds his hand out to walk with us and carry us so if the lord is asking you my dear exemplars to take that brave next step in your life and if that means walking on water and that means walking on water means doing the will of God in for in your life and for the lives of other people around you. Do not be afraid. Do not doubt because God said he will carry you and he will always be there for you, reaching out his hand to you. And also, if we are going to apply this at what's happening around us right now with all the pandemic, the sickness, the crisis that's going on, if we are going to walk through that, and be victorious we have to focus our eyes on jesus and he will help us through if you focus your eyes on the winds and the waves and all the things that's going on around you you will really really sink but all you have to do is to trust the shepherd the shepherd who will make us lie down in green pastures and who will never leave us nor forsake us because he will be sababa forever sababa in our lives Amen. I hope you have learned another lesson today, my dear exemplars, and I hope to see you again next time. This is Pastor Paula. God bless you. Bye. Psalms 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuse and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wing you will find refuse. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrows that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that weighs at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuse. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, no place come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the other, the young lion and the serpent will trample on their foot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Good morning.
I'm Pastora Babes. It's time to sing along with me. Come on, let's sing for Oh How He Loves You and Me. Grab a chair and let's warm up. Psalm 149 verse 3, 
praise His name with dancing, accompanied by tambourine and harp. Come and dance along. Stay fit for service. See you next time. God bless. Hello, I'm Pastor Atin Gachalian and thank you so much once again for joining us in our prayer time. We are always grateful for the prayer request you are sharing with us. So how do we pray? Fervently and with joy. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, we humble ourselves before you and we are so grateful, O God. Because we know that you are always there for us. That you are always inclining your ears to hear our prayers. And that you are always there to answer us. Thank you, Lord, because whatever we ask for in prayer, as we believe, we will receive it. Lord, right now, we lift up to you the needs of your people. Lord, for Sister Carmen Hardino. Father, we believe for her complete healing, Lord God. We ask, Father, that you will touch her spine, and you will cause healing, strength to those bones in Jesus' name, that she'll be able to be back in her ministry, in serving you, in serving your people, oh God. Thank you, because her heart's desire of serving you will be granted. Thank you, Jesus, for the healing and complete restoration of her health, of the health of Sister Carmen. And Father, we also thank you for Sister Josephine Angeles, God, as she believes for the healing of her mom. Thank you, Lord, for touching her body right now and causing healing to flow. Lord, we rebuke that fever. We rebuke that flu-like symptoms. And Father, we ask that you will cause her oxygen level to be normalized in Jesus' name. Father, let life flow to her body in Jesus' name. And Lord, we also lift up to you, Sister Remen de la Cruz, mother, Sister Remeline. God, touch those kidneys. Touch her kidneys, O oh God, and restore her kidneys in its original condition. Father, we thank you that those kidneys will be functioning normally in Jesus' name. We also thank you, God, that you will fully restore her health, O oh Lord. Thank you because we know that you are the God that restores. You are our great Jehovah, Rapha. And Lord, we also lift up to you, Sister Emily Lakaba. Thank you, God, for as she believes for the healing of Tiffany, Lord. God, she will be out of the hospital the soonest possible time. And that, Lord... Her blood pressure will be normalized. Father, thank you that no organ in her body will be touched. It, it will not be damaged, O oh God. But Father, thank you for protecting her, O oh Lord, and causing her to be back in her strength. Thank you, Father, because by the wounds that Jesus took upon himself, Tiffany has been healed. And Father, we also pray for Sister Nena Ballesteros, grandchild jail. Lord, touch her. Her body, O oh God. Father, we thank you that you will cause Jill, O oh God, to be healed as well. Father, we ask that you will cause life strength to flow upon her body in Jesus' name. And that she will have a good result of all her laboratory tests. That Lord, in no less than time, she will be back on her feet, strong, healthy, playing. And thank you, Lord, because all the hospital bills, all the medications, O oh God, that she needs. Father, will be well provided for, that you will open your heaven and you will provide for the needs of this family. Thank you, Lord, because you are good and you will do this for your people. You are the God that heals and you are the God that provides. We love you, Father. We thank you for answering the needs of your people. We give you praises and glory that you alone deserve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you again next week for another time of prayer. Thank you so much for joining us today. 
It has been a great pleasure to have you and we're looking forward to having you join us again next week for another week of Senior Moments to Remember. Before we go, we'd like to ask again, if you have any prayer requests, type them in the comment section below or if you have any testimony, let us know about it. We would love to rejoice with you. Let's close in prayer. Father, I lift up to you my brother and my sister. I lift up to you tatay and nanay. I ask that your blessing will be upon them. And I ask, Lord, that as we enter the weekend, Lord, let them just enjoy the online services. Let them enjoy the services, God. For those who are able to join their families, who they do the drive-in, let them enjoy being in that place, O oh God. Lord, I just ask that your hand will be upon our seniors, our exemplar. I pray that your hand will be upon my brother, my sister, si tatay, si nanay. Let this weekend be a blessed weekend in your presence. Strengthen their bodies, Lord. Bring healing to their bodies and fill their hearts, O oh God, with joy and gladness. There's nothing like being in your presence, Lord. Bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much again for joining us today and we're looking forward to having you be with us again next week for Senior Moments to Remember. God bless. Moments to remember.